sense now. Yeah, but before we bring them easier. on, let's get to know them a little bit better. Dr. Alex Melrose was born and raised in Auckland and he knew from an early age that he wanted to be a vet. He always wanted to rescue and save animals. Fast forward to 1992, that's when Alex became Dr. Alex, a certified veterinarian. He's been doing it almost 17 years now and still has that same love for helping the furry community. One of his most incredible animal experiences has been hand feeding and petting his favourite animal of all time, the dolphin. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Alex Melrose and his buddy Bella. Hey, how's it going, Alex? Good, High five, mate, if you can. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, welcome to the show. Cross. Thanks for having and me. a virtual one to you, Bella. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's mentally doing it. She's, it <laughs> she's a little bit camera shy, but that's all good. You okay, Bella? Hey, Bella. Hello. <laughs> so how are really you? It's an exciting place to be. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. Good to have you. Crazy I'm great, thanks, yeah. What have you been up to since we last saw you? Uh, I try to fix up lots of animals, obviously. <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> um, working hard and... Uh, yeah, picking out little uh, Bella to, to bring onto the show is a bit of an example. Fantastic stuff. Yeah. Now, I understand you're coming on the show, mate, today to talk about sort of pet health and the food and what's good and what's get, what's bad. So, exactly, what yeah. are some helpful tips um, when it comes to feeding your dog? Well, I think if we look at Bella, as, as I said, as an example, I mean, she started to develop um, problems with her digestion. So, she, she was having really loose uh, motions. She was vomiting a bit sometimes. Mm -hmm. She was losing condition. Her coat was starting to look bad. Poor Bella. Yeah, <laughs> so st stuff like that was going on. And then she started getting some abdominal pain and yeah. and um, we, we ran a whole lot of tests on her and found out that she had uh, a condition called pancreatitis which is where her digestive organs sort of uh, overproduce um, yeah. digestive enzymes and they start to actually attack the, the rest of her body rather than just the food that you eat. And this all happens just from being fed the wrong stuff? Well not, not in her case, it's more of a, in, in her case it was more of a genetic predisposition right. and then when she'd have something that was a little bit fatty or a little bit rich it would just trigger it off. Mm -hmm. you know? So she is a dog that you could not give, for example, sausages to, you know, right. things like that. Yeah. Okay, nice. Now that brings me to my next question, because so often when we have barbecues, and you know what I'm talking about, uh, but you often see a dog and you're like, yeah, have a sausage, I'll have one, yeah, yeah. one for you, one for me. Um, if we were to throw a dog something from the barbie, what would it be? Or what would it not be, rather? A pet. It's <laughs> <laughs> your safest bet, because I mean, if it's not your dog, you don't quite know what's going on. Now, it could be a dog like Bella, and if you gave her a whole lot of uh, fatty sausages, she'd, she'd be in hospital the next day at, at my clinic. So, yeah. literally, so you, you've got to watch that. Other animals are going to have less serious conditions, like inflammatory bowel disease or irritable bowel syndrome. Mm. That still sounds bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of the, um, the symptoms, like for a general dog, sort of what they would get if they were starting to feel sick, what's some sort of first signs that you can look out for? Um, you're going to get them looking a lot more quiet than normal, losing energy, not wanting to exercise as much. Mm -hmm. As I said, sometimes they're going to vomit a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe go off their food and start to look a bit hunched up and a bit bloated. Mm. Those are the gassy, you know, those are the signs okay. you're going to see, yeah. Now, what does it mean when your dog starts eating grass? Well, interestingly enough, cats and dogs will just do that because they actually like it. Um, and there's actually been a lot of studies done all around the world trying to figure out exactly why because they don't only do it when they're feeling sick. Yeah. If, you, if you take grass away from, from a dog or a cat for a certain amount of time, it'll actually crave it. And when you put it back out, it'll, it'll run, run, run out and have a munch on it. So they seem to do it as some sort of behavioural thing that they just enjoy the, the sensation and the taste and stuff. Right. Yeah. So what would be sort of the best food that you could feed your pets and your dog? Well, you really want to tailor it to the individual. Yeah. So like with Bella, she's 10. Yeah. And um, you want to have her on a, a senior diet or a, a, a mature diet, shall right. we say. Um, and, and something which has got lower levels of protein and puts less, less load on her kidneys is a really good good way to start. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic Just stick stuff. with the dog food, not the human food. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, those were our questions to you, Alex. But hey, guys at home, if you've got a question for Alex, then you know what to do. Send them into to us, studio2 at tvnz.co.nz, and we could maybe get them through to you. But right now, though, it's time for a break, so you never know. You can send in those questions right now. See you soon. Very lucky to be hanging out with Pet the Alex and the beautiful Bella, who's behaving very nicely. She's gotten used to the cameras now. She's, She's at home here at yeah. Studio 2. Yeah. Now, we didn't talk about this, but <laughs> what kind of dog is Bella? She is a West Highland White. Are they quite rare or are they quite common? Um, there's a few around because they're pretty popular because they've got such cool personalities and mm. very friendly, pretty mellow. I've got to say, the whole time that Bella's been in here in the studio, <laughs> we haven't heard one bark. Not, not one, one yelp. One. She's been no. cruising, man. Yeah. Very well behaved. Yeah. Very well behaved. Anyway, it is time to put your questions forward to our pet vet. Mm. So here we go. This one is from confused owner who likes to remain anonymous. <laughs> uh, if my cat has the flu, should I take it to the vet? 
Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty easy to answer. Um, you know, because it, it can get a lot worse. It can get down to their chest. And they can get really sick, just like in a person. So, uh -huh. so get in there and get some help. There awesome go. stuff. We've got one here from Rosa McDonald. She says, I keep my guinea pigs outside, but we're worried that they might be feeling the cold and maybe get colds. What sort of help you can give them? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, most guinea pigs are outside because it's pretty hard to train them yeah, for yeah. indoor living. So um, I, I think most of the time they're all right. You just got to make sure their hutch is really good and they've got a lot of bedding that they can get burrowed down into to get their warmth, you know. Mm. Now, this question is very similar, except instead of a guinea pig, it's a cat. It's from Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Will my cat get sick if she is always outside when it is winter? No. No, that's a good, good wow. question. Because, you know, with people, you, you go down to the farm scene, they're always really busy with people's colds in the winter. Mm. But with us, it's actually the opposite. We get a lot more illness in the summer. Mm. And cats and dogs just don't seem to pick up those winter colds very often. So I don't wow. know if that's a psychosomatic thing with people or that's what. That's awesome. You know? yeah. now, I've got another just about cats as well. This whole nine life thing, is, yeah. this, is this true? Like, what is this myth that's been started from the cartoons you've seen and they've got nine lives? What's that I, all about? I reckon there's some truth to it. And the reason I say that is that it's probably because cats are so resilient. Yeah. Okay, they, they, they can bounce back from things that you or I would, would not recover from, you know. So I think that's probably where it started out. And mm. I do have some clients that come in with cats that have had a hell of a lot of things go wrong. Yeah. And, and they've, they've come right back to full health again and again and again. So I think that it does exist out there. Because my mum's got this crazy cat, right? It's like half <laughs> wild. And what happens is that it sits by the front door and we've got a porch at my mum and dad's house. So every time you walk up, you just see this cat go... It just jumps completely off the front lawn, like yeah. onto the lawn, and it's like a big drop. It'd be yeah. like two, three meters, and yeah, it just yeah, yeah. walks off normal, like yeah. nothing happened. I think if I jumped off, I'd be like, ah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you've got to be impressed, eh? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. All right, here's a good question from Ellie and Olivia Watson in Wellington. Uh, we've adopted a stray cat that was sleeping under our house when we moved in about two years ago. It's a tabby manx. And we're wondering, are manx cats born with short tails or are they cut off when they're kittens? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a genetic um, sort of defect, really, a mut genetic mutation. So they're, they're, they're made that way, they come out that way. And, uh, Crazy. Pretty, it's quite a cool look, actually. Awesome stuff, yeah. well done. And guys, we're running out of time, we can't get through all of the questions. A great response, thank you so much for sending those in to us. Indeed, but now here's your chance to win big.